Hey y'all, today we are doing a full Easter soul food dinner. We cooking like the church mamas with the bat wing arms and the Obama church fans. Do y'all hear me? To all the Auntie Ernestines and Sister Mabels out there, if you was trying to retire from being the family's cook, don't make nothing in this video, okay? Because you're going to be doing it for life. We're gonna be making everything from the brown sugar ham to the andouille sauces dressing and even a dessert. We are going to do a lemon cookies and cream pound cake. I feel like with Easter, you always need to do something that has a little bit of citrus. And we're gonna start with the pound cake because ideally, this is something that you should make the night before. Pound cakes always taste better the next day. Top tip for getting a moist pound cake is to actually weigh your flour. Three cups of all-purpose flour weighs 360 grams. When I started weighing my flour, I stopped having dry cakes because flour is compressed in the bag. And so just scooping three cups out on its own, you get way more flour than a recipe needs. You could actually do the whole sift and then scoop out method to get the flour decompressed, but this is honestly way faster. And if I have my scale out, I'll go ahead and weigh my sugar, which is 600 grams, but even sugar doesn't really compress, so you can't actually scoop it right out of the bag. Now to my flour mixture, I am putting in some baking powder, one teaspoon. I'm also going to be adding half a teaspoon of salt as well as some lemon pudding mix. Baby, this gonna change the flavor, it's gonna change the game. Don't leave this out, you will love it. I'm going to mix this up and then I'm going to start getting my cake ready. I am using half of a cup of some butter flavor shortening. You could just use three sticks of butter, but honey, not only is this good, but we saving a little coin because y'all know butter been getting high out here in these streets, okay. Four ounces of cream cheese is going to make this cake super moist. And this is just the zest of two lemons I'm going to throw in there for that true lemon flavor. Of course, I'm putting in my sugar because we're going to beat this all together for about five to six minutes. Halfway through, I'll scrape down the sides as needed. And then it needs to get light and fluffy. This is essential for this cake because this cake is actually pretty dense. So you better do all the whipping and the beating you can do, okay? Then I'm gonna put in my eggs. I have six eggs. After each egg, I'm going to let it beat until the yolk is gone. When I have all the eggs added, I'm then going to let it beat for 30 seconds. Like I said, this cake is dense, so you better actually whip it. We need this cake to rise. I absolutely love sour cream in cakes. So I'm using one cup of sour cream and I'm going to alternate adding it with the flour. Now the sour cream has a higher fat content than say using one cup of milk. Because of that, this cake is gonna be super moist and it's gonna have that density that a traditional pound cake has. If you prefer your cakes to be a little bit lighter, Instead of one cup of sour cream, you actually can use one cup of whole milk or one cup of evaporated milk. Now I have had my beaters going on low because I don't want too much gluten to form while I'm alternating the sour cream and flour. In between, I'm gonna go ahead and put in one tablespoon of lemon extract because this is a lemon cake, honey, and we need that lemon flavor but vanilla always anchors a cake. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in one tablespoon of vanilla extract as well. And then I'm going to continue alternating the flour and the sour cream. Once I have all of this mixed together, I will then put in two tablespoons of fresh lemon juice. You can't beat the fresh lemon juice flavor in a lemon cake. Cause the one thing I cannot stand is an artificial tasting lemon cake. Y'all know like those little pound cakes you be getting from the grocery store sometimes. I just, I don't like it. Okay, I don't like it. Now, once I have it mixed together fairly well, I'm going to just fold in the batter just to make sure everything's well incorporated because you know you don't want to over mix. I'm going to grease and flour my good old butt pan. Y'all done seen her before. She a, old, she a trusty one. She done been in my family for over a decade. You know what I'm saying? So I know these cakes gonna come out right when I use this butt pan, right? I had to take this from my mama's house. Um, then I'm going to go ahead and put the flour around here, get it ready. And this is when the magic start popping, okay? I have some lemon Oreos, mm-hmm. And I'm going to break them up. I'm gonna take about 15 to 18 cookies and I'm going to break them up and put them at the bottom. And this is going to form a sweet lemony cookie crust. 
Now, I know some of y'all might be like, no, I'm going to just take my cookies and I'm going to fold them into the pound cake. Okay, come here. I'm going to just tell y'all right now, I done made this cake a couple times and every time I do that, it makes my pound cake drop. I don't know how some people get it to work, but I like putting mine just at the bottom because it makes my cakes fall. But if you want to do it, do it at your own risk. Okay. And if it worked for you, let me know. Then on top of this cookie crust, I am going to put my pound cake batter. I'm going to spread it all around because this batter is thick. Okay, it's thick with two C's. I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to need some help. Okay, once I get my batter in, I'm going to smooth out the top. And I'm going to also knock the cake on the counter a few times because I want that batter to get in between those cookie pieces. And you don't want air bubbles in your pound cake. And hey, if you've been enjoying this recipe so far, honey, go ahead and throw me a like. And if you like these recipes, I'm bringing you some different things. You better go ahead and subscribe because I post new recipes weekly. I've had my oven preheating at 325 degrees and I'm going to bake this cake for an hour and 45 minutes to two hours. I know, but this is a really dense cake. I know that sounds like a long time, but an hour and a half in, I actually put some foil over the cake because I didn't want it to brown too much trust me this needs the long baking time but it's going to come out extremely moist after letting it cool for about 10 minutes in the pan i went ahead and flipped it and then i put it on a wire rack so that it can cool all the way around a little bit easier and i started working on that glaze this is going to be a lightly sweetened glaze it's going to be really creamy and a little bit tangy so i have two ounces of cream cheese one cup of powdered sugar about a cap full of vanilla and then I'm going to add enough lemon juice to get the texture that I want from the glaze. I want mine a little bit loose. I ended up adding in the juice of one and a half lemons and putting in about a tablespoon of heavy cream. I beat everything together and then I realized I wanted it a little bit looser and then I put in some more lemon juice. Now this is going to be a little bit tangy from that lemon juice but Trust me, it's going to pair very well with the sweetness from the cookies. So you don't need it to be super sweet. And your eyes are not deceiving you, honey. I did cut out a slice. <laughs> it was so good. And then I glazed it, honey. And you know what? Ain't nobody say nothing about it, okay? So I glazed this cake up really well and then I decided I was going to decorate it. So I just took maybe about five Oreos and I broke them into large chunks at first and then I broke them into smaller pieces just to fill in the gaps, you know, and make it real cute and pretty. And y'all, everybody was loving this cake. If you make this cake, please let me know. The night before a big meal, I also like to make my cranberry relish. This honestly tastes the best if it cools overnight, so this is something you can do while the cake is cooking. So I'm gonna add 12 ounces of cranberries with one cup of the juice from the pineapple and the mandarin oranges, a 15 ounce can of oranges, and eight ounces of crushed pineapple, a half a cup of sugar. Now y'all y'all know cranberry relish is basically jam, so don't even be up in here talking about this too sweet, okay? I'm gonna mix this together and then I am going to add in one box of Jello. Like now, I know everyone don't do this, okay? But you know, my auntie taught me how to do this and I absolutely love it. You can use the strawberry kind or the orange kind and I've had great results with either. I'm gonna let this come to a simmer for about, you know, six minutes until you hear them cranberries pop, okay? That's how you're gonna know they're getting soft. And then you wanna refrigerate this overnight or six hours i like to add in half of a cup of pecans with the heat turned off and then just let this set are you guys into doing ham lamb or turkey for easter before refrigeration they used to slaughter pigs in the winter because it was cool and the meat wouldn't spoil so by the time spring came around ham was the best choice for the holiday table now this is a nine pound ham. It was already kind of in some brown sugar glaze, um, just, just in its juices and I left it, okay? And I like to get sliced hams because ain't nobody trying to be carving a ham, at least for me, okay? Now I'm gonna take cloves and I'm just gonna put them all around the ham. I'll put them in some of the slices, but mostly I'm gonna concentrate the cloves on the top because I want them to go into the fat. And when that fat sort of melts down in the oven, it'll sort of add that clovey flavor. Now to me, if you don't got clove, you ain't had ham, okay? So this is a must, but if you are really against clove or if you just don't wanna want take the time to spike, you could just add maybe a fourth of a teaspoon of ground cloves to the sauce. 
I'm going to score the back because typically that is not sliced. And then I am going to add the cloves in sort of on the, you know, in the little intersections. All right. Next thing we're going to make is a brown sugar mustard rum glaze. Yes. So I have a half of a cup of brown sugar. I'm going to add in about a fourth of a cup of Dijon mustard. Even if you're not a mustard fan, it's not going to go crazy. Now I'm going to put a little rum in there, y'all. A little Bacardi. Come on now. It's not going to be strong. Just going to add, you know, that little holiday vibe. You know what I'm saying? Then I'm going to use about a tablespoon of honey. And I like to add in some spices. So I'm going to use about a half of a teaspoon of cinnamon and about a fourth of a teaspoon of nutmeg. Of course, if you're using your ground, ground clove, you could add it in now. And I'm going to put in a pinch of salt. I have two tablespoons of hot butter. That's going to just help the brown sugar melt because I ain't going to try and heat this up on the stove. Okay. I'm gonna pour half the glaze on the ham now and then I'll save the other half to use near the end before I broil it. Now y'all, I'm gonna cook this at 325 for two to two and a half hours covered with foil. You should baste every 30 minutes, but don't make the mistake I made. Guys, I was cooking so many dishes and I forgot to baste and unfortunately my ham dried out a little bit. And I'm telling you, I, I know how to do some ham, okay? If you've seen my other holiday videos, but this is what happens when you are a YouTuber and you are filming, okay? You forget, so don't forget like me, okay? I hope you guys are not disappointed. <laughs> um, but the ham still tasted great. So this is after two and a half hours. I went in, I basted it. You know, it's a little crispy around the edges, okay? You know what I'm saying? But we gonna eat it, all right? And then I'm gonna pour on the other half of the glaze and I am just going to lightly broil this like on low for about, you know, three minutes until... The glaze just gets really sticky um, and I wanted it, you know, kind of have that tacky feeling on the top. Now, this ham had a wonderful flavor. It was so delicious. And if you baste, you're definitely not going to have the slight drying out problem um, at all because I've done ham so many times. Um, but you guys, I hope you all enjoy that recipe. Now, I'm going to start on some turkey neck gravy. So I bought these separately because, of course, I'm not making a turkey today. So I'm going to add in some carrots, some celery, half of an onion, some garlic, two turkey necks, a bay leaf, a lots of herbs. So I like sage, thyme, a little rosemary, okay? And I'm going to add enough water to cover everything. I think the easiest way to do this is to pressure cook this in the Instant Pot if you have one. I don't really want this to simmer on my stove for about two to three hours. So I'm just going to pressure cook this for about 30 minutes and at that point the turkey meat will be falling off the bone and the vegetable wolves will have done everything that they gonna do okay i am going to add in a tablespoon of chicken bouillon and about half a tablespoon of garlic bouillon this broth will make our gravy but it will also be used to make our andouille sausage cornbread dressing when it is done i am going to sieve it so i'm just going to pour everything into a sieve there's a bowl at the bottom to catch it because y'all know we ain't wasting the goodness okay and then i'm going to take out the turkey necks and just pick off the meat and y'all honestly i be chewing on the bones okay you know we be tossing them but i be chewing on them anybody else do that <laughs> now to start on our dressing i'm going to add three tablespoons of butter and I'm going to put in half of an onion, two ribs of celery and half of a red bell pepper. I'm going to saute this to it's getting nice and brown. Okay, like me, baby. <laughs> and then I am going to add on a little bit of Creole seasoning and about three cloves of garlic and about seven leaves of sage which is pretty much the only time i be using sage okay um is with this stuffing in holiday time so i'm going to just saute that and then i'm going to add in about half of a teaspoon of thyme i'm going to use about half of a teaspoon of this poultry magic and i'm also going to add some salt free cajun seasoning just mostly i'm gonna tell y'all the truth mostly doing this to taste okay i'm gonna saute this for about 30 more seconds and then i'm gonna clear the pan then I am going to brown up some Cajun andouille sausage. I'm only using about four ounces today because I didn't want mine super meaty. But you could add in eight ounces if you want a lot of meat in yours. All right. Now, a few of my subscribers have told me that adding one box of Jiffy into my cornbread dressing is actually good. 
y'all if this is not good let me tell you you going you i'm gonna kick you outside and i ain't gonna let you take no leftovers okay potty break in the woods you hear what i'm trying to tell you so this better be good okay now to this i am going to be adding in one box of stovetop stuffing the chicken and sort of savory herbs one and then i'm going to add in my sausage and my sauteed vegetables I'm going to mix this together and then I'm going to add in one can of cream of chicken. You could also use cream of mushroom and about two and a half cups of broth. I add in two cups of broth first and then add the half a cup when I felt like, you know, I need a little more moisture. I'm also going to add a little bit more of that poultry magic just to taste, to season everything. And then you want to, you know, you want to give everything a taste before you add in the egg, you know, and so I'm going to add in one egg as well. Once this is all mixed together, I'm going to put it in my baking dish and I'm going to cook this at 375 for about 35 to 40 minutes. Now, if you double this recipe and say do it in an aluminum pan, you're definitely going to need to increase the cook time to probably about 45 to 50 minutes because it's going to be rather thick. Tell me in the comments what you typically eat for your Easter dinner. I've always had ham, but now that I'm older, I love lamb chops as well. Growing up in a large family of seven people, I actually never had lamb chops until I was an adult. And you know, back in the day, at least my parents would say, you know, there's some foods that are not meant for kids, like your taste just can't appreciate the food yet until you get older. So I never had it, but I love them. And I'll link a recipe down in the description box. Now this dressing is absolutely delicious. And if you want, you can actually put this together the night before and then bake it the next day. Now this turkey gravy easy. I'm just gonna put about five cups of the broth in a pot. I'm gonna add the turkey meat. And then I am going to add in about a tablespoon of cornstarch with about a fourth of a cup of water mixed in. And I'm gonna let this simmer for about five minutes or so until it thickens up. I'm going to add salt and pepper just to taste. And that's all you need for a delicious, easy gravy. It already has the flavors from the veggies and the turkey bone and all that goodness. Y'all, these wine braised greens are some of the best greens of my life. And if I'm lying, I'm flying, baby, and my tail's still on the ground. <laughs> big mama, if you make this, they gonna be drinking up that pot liquor. And shoot, you may even get your big daddy, okay, bring around these greens. Because these greens gonna set it off, let me tell you, okay. So I am going to be putting in some brown sugar, some chipotle and garlic seasoning, creole seasoning, pepper, and red pepper flakes. I'm adding this to my sauteed bacon and onions. I'm also going to add about a half of a tablespoon of chicken bouillon, and I'm just going to saute this for about a minute. Then I'm putting in one cup of a dry red wine. I'm just using, you know, a little expensive one from the Aldi's, okay? And I'm going to add this. Now, you want to let this simmer until this sort of reduces by about half. So there's not going to be any alcohol in the greens. But this right wine is kind of going to act like your vinegar because it's acidic. And it is going to add a wonderful flavor. Then I'm going to put in a mixture of kale, turnip, and mustard greens and two turkey tails. I know y'all know about that, okay? I'm gonna add in a liter of boiling water just to help reduce the greens right away for my kettle. I'm gonna cover this and I'm gonna let this simmer for about one hour to an hour and 10 minutes. Y'all gonna love these greens. They are tender, they are easy. Since I didn't use collards, there's not any bitterness. So good, okay? Next, we are gonna make a delicious cheesy corn pudding. I think that the cheesiness from this pairs so well with the other things in this meal. If you try this, let me know what you think. I am putting in evaporated milk, butter, sugar. I have some sour cream that's gonna make it really moist. I'm also throwing in three eggs and I'm gonna whisk this really well. We want to make sure we break up those yolks, especially before we add in our flour, which we're definitely going to have to beat that well because we do not want any lumps. And this flour is going to help give it a little thickness. I'm also going to add in some Creole seasoning and some baking powder and a little bit of pepper just to give it a nice flavor. I'm putting in three tablespoons of minced onion. Now the habanero that I'm putting here is not going to make it spicy. It's going to add a nice flavor, so definitely add that. 
and the red bell pepper is going to give it a lot of color i'm then going to add three cups of corn now this is just drained canned corn but you could also use frozen that would be totally fine and i'm using a cup and a half of mixed cheese so i have here some sharp cheddar cheese as well as a habanero pepper jack and a little bit of munster basically i just took whatever cheese was in my refrigerator and i chopped it up and i put it in here so you can use whatever blend that you would like I'm then going to spray a baking dish and I am going to put this in there and I'm going to cook this at 350 for about 45 to 50 minutes. It's really going to depend on the size baking dish you use. If you use a larger pan, it's going to take less time, but that middle really has to be set. Now, a lot of people ask me, they see my cast iron skillet in the oven. They say, why she, you know, why cast iron? Why Mabel down there? Okay, Mabel live in the oven, y'all. Y'all trying to evict her, but that's where she be at all the time, okay? Now, as you can see, this cheesy corn pudding is really bubbly and golden brown. This has so much flavor, and the little colors from the pepper just really just make this really nice. I allowed this to sit for about five minutes before cutting into it, and this is so good. Let me know if you're going to try this recipe. Next, we are going to make a classic Southern potato salad. Now here are my ingredients. I have some Tony's Creole seasoning. I'm using some chicken bouillon, a little bit of honey. Now this is not normal, but my Aunt Polly, who could throw down on some potato salad, she used some honey, so I'm gonna use that. I have sweet relish, of course, potatoes, yellow mustard. I like Duke's mayonnaise for potato salad. A little bit of Old Bay, but we ain't gonna add too much because we don't wanna be like seafood, okay? Um, my paprika, garlic powder, under powder, white pepper, and of course, we're gonna use some eggs. Now the best potatoes to use for a potato salad are the waxy kind. These are like your yellow or your golden potatoes. You'll also see some of them that have like honey um, potatoes. They are creamier and they also hold a good shape while boiling. So I think these are better than the russet. Now I'm gonna chop these into the desired size pieces that I want. You know, you don't want them too big, okay? You don't want them too small or else they're gonna disintegrate. Um, and then I'm going to give them another wash. I like to get the starch off of them. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is set my water to boil. I'm gonna add a tablespoon of salt and I'm gonna add my eggs in before I put in my potatoes. I like to make sure my eggs is all the way cooked, okay? I do not like no runny eggs. So. One of them was actually cracked. Okay, he was trying to act up. So I had to take him out and I had to put in a new one. All right. So I start boiling my eggs about three minutes before I put in my potatoes. And the salt is going to help them peel easier. After three minutes, I'm going to add in a tablespoon of chicken bouillon as well as my potatoes. The chicken bouillon is going to flavor the potatoes as well as the salt. And that's the main reason why some of y'all potato salads don't taste good, okay? Because y'all don't season, y'all don't season the potatoes, okay? Y'all know potatoes is bland. Now, after about five to seven minutes, you're gonna see you can stick your fork in your potatoes and they're going to be ready. You need to immediately drain this and then rinse this with cool water. The cool water is going to stop the cooking process and it's going to keep your potatoes from getting mushy. My main tip is to make this in advance and actually put it in the fridge for about an hour to cool down. I think that's the best thing to do because if not, the seasonings won't really, you won't have the good gauge for how much seasoning you could use because everything's going to be warm. If you let the potatoes cool down and then you also make this sauce here cold, then you know exactly how it's going to taste. I'm going to put in, in total, about a cup of mayonnaise, about a tablespoon of yellow mustard, about two teaspoons of honey, and now I'm just going to shake in the Creole seasoning. I'll probably use about a teaspoon total, a little bit of garlic, a little bit of onion powder. You know how it is. Now, some people do like to put raw onion and celery in their potato salad, um, but you look, I ain't really trying to crunch on all that in mine. So you do you, honey. If you like it, you go for it. But I like a simple potato salad. Now the Old Bay, just put a pinch. You don't want to get crazy with it. You don't want it tasting like seafood, but a little bit does taste nice. In total, I'm going to use about eight ounces of this sweet relish. And I actually like to drain my sweet relish a little bit. Like I just don't take the stuff from the bottom because I don't want my potato salad to be too soupy. Then I'm going to go ahead and give this a good mix and a taste. Now you will see that these eggs are going to peel so easy. Like, baby, 
Do you see this? Perfection, okay? I bet you ain't even know you could do it like that, all right? It's that salt in the water, okay? That's going to let it peel easy. And um, I shocked it with that cold water rinse. Helps it come off clean as ever. Now, I like small eggs in my potato salad, so I am going to grate my um, eggs. Now, you could chop them if you like. I just don't like big chunks of too much egg. Now, at the end, I'll just throw in whatever's left. That's not going to bother me, but this is just my preference. You can cut, you can grate, you know, do what you want to do. But I do like to save one egg at the end that I'll just slice for decorations you know what i mean we always got to let them know that we doing something up in the kitchen that we know how to cook okay you know what i'm saying put these little extra touches on here just makes everything special now the first thing i'm going to do is mix in my grated up eggs into my um, mayonnaise mixture i like to do this so that i don't have to over mix when i add my cool down potatoes and these have chilled for one hour in the fridge I'm going to toss these gently because I don't want to break up the potatoes too much, but I do want to beat them up a little bit on the edges because that's going to make your potato salad naturally thicker. But remember, we are not making mashed potatoes, so do not get crazy with this. Now at this point, I just adjusted any of my seasonings to taste, and then I put on a little paprika and parsley, and I let this chill overnight in the fridge. I hope you all have enjoyed this Easter menu. Let me know what you guys are going to make from this video. And I pray that this serves as a guide. So while you're cooking, this can be plain and you can always reference this to get more and more ideas for your holiday table. I love you and Jesus loves you. And I'll see you next time in Kamara's Kitchen. Goodbye and God bless.